Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we begin tonight in New Haven, where even after dozens of arrests and getting forced out of their original location, Yale students are still protesting their university. Thank you for joining us here on the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Students are calling for Yale to divest from military companies that are sending money to Israel as the war in Gaza rages on. Now, starting Friday, hundreds of protesters planted themselves at Beinecke Plaza. They were removed by police earlier today, and 48 of them were arrested. They then migrated to the intersection of Grove and College Streets, a major intersection there in the Elm City. Well, police broke up that crowd, but they just moved down the street. Fox when Jake Garcia was on campus as students were moved from one area to another and he joins us live now with tonight's update. Yeah, so Jake, we've seen this group reform and regroup in different iterations and, and locations all day. What does the protest look like now and where are they? Well, Brent, they are outside of, of the Bass Library here on Yale's campus, and they've been here for about five hours. Uh, not much has changed since they moved down the street earlier, just before five o'clock. Yale students protesting the university's investment policies after the commission that oversees investments announced last week that the university would not divest from two ETF stocks that contain military weapons manufacturing companies. Yale has a lot of investments in weapons manufacturers, um, and so we are demanding divestment and disclosure from Yale. New Haven Police Chief Carl Jacobson said the department had been in talks with organizers all day. It was in the best interest of the city to just allow them to have that that space for a period of time. Then I talked to the, uh, my, me and my staff talked to the organizers and said, we really need this open for rush hour because it's gonna cause us different problems with traffic throughout the city. They agreed to that. Just before five Monday afternoon, the group said they were moving to another spot on campus. This is our city and we want to respect that. And also the target of what we're doing is not New Haven, it's Yale. Students gathered their belongings and marched down College Street to protest on the green just outside the Bass Library. Reaction to the arrest Monday morning and the ongoing protests poured in. The Connecticut chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations wrote a statement saying, quote, We deplore the arrest of more than 47 students at Beinecke Plaza this morning who were engaged in a peaceful protest against Yale's policies. All Jewish students on campus say the protest makes them feel unsafe. It's not because there aren't valid concerns here that need to be discussed. It's that the way in which they're doing them is anti-Semitic and scary. More than 60 Yale professors signed and sent a letter to the university's president. A portion of that letter reads, quote, We are concerned without a leap of action, conditions will continue to deteriorate and calls for violence against Jews will worsen. And those arrests that have been uh, that happened this morning, they actually will be referred to the university for some disciplinary action that could include multiple things, including up to suspension. And we have reached out to the university to see how long that they will allow these students to protest here, but we have not heard back. Reporting live in New Haven, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Jake, thank you. To Wallingford now, where police say the young woman and baby who reportedly died in a house fire last week were actually dead before that fire broke out. The bodies of 19-year-old Charisma Johnson and nine-month-old Kylan Varnado were found at the home on Geneva Avenue last week. A third victim, 24-year-old Justin Varnado, died at the hospital. Police say Varnado had been arrested in late March on domestic violence charges. He was barred from showing up at the Geneva home. The medical examiner is still investigating the cause of death for Charisma and baby Kylan. We're learning more about an officer-involved shooting that happened in Colchester last week. Officials have confirmed to Fox 61 the man shot by police has died from his injuries. The shooting happened at a home on Norwich Avenue last Thursday night. Details are still limited, but the Office of the Inspector General says a preliminary report along with body cam footage of the incident are expected to be released this week. All right, time for first check on the forecast now, and we have a frost alert to contend with tonight, but at least the week is looking dry. 
Yeah, I can't believe how cold it's going to be tonight. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us. I thought you were just testing out your frost graphic, maybe no. just showing it off <laughs> over there. But no, it's real. It's always so weird when you go from temperatures in the 70s, like we had for a couple of days last week, back down near freezing. So we're going to do that tonight with a frost advisory in effect for most of the state. It's not in effect for Litchfield County because it's too early in the season. The National Weather Service isn't issuing them there yet, but also not in effect for the immediate shoreline of New Haven and also Fairfield counties. This is what it looked like this morning, though. So I think we had overnight lows in the upper 20s for Wyndham, for Merritt, and 36 for the New Haven area. So we already kind of got there this morning. I think we'll see similar numbers again as we head through tonight and into tomorrow. We've got clear skies overhead, the perfect ingredients for any daytime warmth that's built up to escape up into the atmosphere and temperatures will drop like a rock especially if the wind goes calm. So overnight lows in the lower to middle 30s for most of the state, but it is possible just like last night into this morning for a couple spots where the wind goes completely calm for some upper 20s to show up. So if you have any early season plants that you want to protect from frost damage, if they're potted, you can bring them inside or you can cover them with a light blanket. Most people aren't really doing too much gardening though this early in the season. Lots of sunshine after a chilly start. It's a beautiful finish. We rebounded to the 60s by afternoon 50s for the shoreline though and it won't be as cold for tomorrow night that's because we have more clouds coming in and the chance for a few showers Wednesday but not much we'll explain your full forecast coming up thank you Rachel it's been a difficult weekend for the Wampanoag Country Club in West Hartford the building caught fire twice this weekend damaging it beyond repair fire crews say the first flames broke out early Saturday morning and then in another t fire tore through just 24 hours later leaving little behind it also caused problems for one West Hartford school the school had to find a new venue for their prom just hours until the event was supposed to happen it was definitely a little bit um, disappointing to hear the news at first, knowing that whether or not it was going to happen, it wasn't going to happen at Wampanoag. School leaders quickly found a new venue in Simsbury. As far as the fire goes, there's still no word on how the two fires started. The fire marshal and the state explosion unit are investigating. When new at 10, state police say one of their troopers was hurt this morning after a crash on I-95 in Bridgeport. It happened around 8.30 a.m. State police say uh, the uh, trooper uh, is with Troop G. Uh, they suffered minor injuries and were hospitalized. There are still no details on the crash itself, but state police are still investigating what happened. And investigators have seized illegal cannabis products from a Naugatuck convenience store. Police believe the store was selling the products to kids. 13 pounds of cannabis and THC vapes and edibles were discovered by several state agencies at 92 Convenience on Church Street. Officials say the store is not licensed to sell cannabis products. No arrests have been made. State lawmakers from both sides of the aisle held a press conference tonight to discuss a proposed amendment to laws surrounding solar panel farms. Representatives are trying to give residents uh, an avenue to make complaints about excessive noise emitted by those solar farms. This is to address years of grievances from people in East Windsor who say solar panels have devalued their properties. We have no authority towns, state representatives, neighbors, municipal CEOs, when the noise becomes such an incredible burden that neighbors are physically and emotionally taxed by listening to the sound all day, we have no authority to do anything. And when those concerns are raised to the siting council, they fall on deaf ears. The amendment would establish rules about what constitutes excessive noise down to the decibel level. It would also require elected officials to bring complaints to energy companies, zoning commissions, and the Connecticut Siting Council to have issues addressed. Meanwhile, in Milford, crews quickly put out a solar panel fire at a home on Easy Street this afternoon. They say the call came in that the roof was on fire of this home. They quickly disconnected the electrical services to the panels and kept it from spreading to other parts of the house. No injuries were reported. The lawyers in former President Donald Trump's criminal hush money trial have made their opening statements. All ahead of the first witness being called to the stand, it's the beginning of week two in an unprecedented trial. Fox's Connor Hansen has the details. 
Former President Donald Trump's criminal hush money trial wrapped for the day after opening statements and the start of testimony. David Pecker, the ex-publisher of the National Enquirer, was called to the stand as the prosecution's first witness. Prosecutors claim Pecker worked with Trump and his ex-attorney, Michael Cohen, to allegedly buy and bury negative stories about Trump before the 2016 election. Today, they really hit big on the notion that there was a conspiracy to disrupt the election. Trump is also facing charges he falsified business records to cover up the illegal payments. Pecker confirmed the tabloid, quote, used checkbook journalism and often paid for stories. All the evidence is going to show that the business records in question, one, were not made by President Trump, and two, were not in any way, shape, or form fraudulent. Before testimony continues Tuesday, the judge is holding a hearing on whether or not Trump repeatedly violated his gag order by publicly attacking witnesses and posting on Truth Social. Prosecutors are requesting the former president be fined at least $3,000. Witnesses like Michael Cohen can go on TV, can record podcasts, can say anything they want. And meanwhile, we're subject to totally unconstitutional restrictions on what we're able to say. David Pecker will continue his testimony tomorrow. Throughout the trial, the court is also expecting to hear from other key witnesses like Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.